In this video, we're going to study the stress-based failure criteria. There are three different failure criteria that we are going to study. The maximum shear stress, the von Mises yield criteria, and the simple criterion for brittle materials. The first criterion states that the material will fail when the maximum shear stress reaches a critical value. We call this critical value tau max, and the maximum shear stress, as shown in the previous uh, video, is the maximum of one of those three values. So how can I find this tau max? I calibrate this material model by taking a specimen, taking it to the lab, and pulling it until I reach sigma yield, and then it fails. The stress state in this case is equal to sigma yield and the rest are zeros. The maximum shear in this state is equal to the maximum difference between the principal stresses divided by two, so sigma y over two. From here, I calculate tau max as equal to sigma yield over two. So to calculate that tau max, to calibrate this material model, I take a piece to the lab, pull on it, find sigma yield, and then tau max is equal to half sigma yield. If sigma 3 is equal to 0, the third principal stress is equal to 0, I have what we call a plain state of stress. The material will fail when the maximum of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 or sigma 1 or sigma 2 is equal to tau max. I just manipulated this equation knowing that sigma 3 is equal to 0. So either this, this will mean the answer to failure, the safe zone is if the maximum of these values is less than 2 tau max. So, if I want to graphically look at this in a coordinate system made by sigma 1 and sigma 2, the onset of failure, the onset of failure is represented by this line. So, any stress state represented by a point on this line means that it's the onset of failure of the material. Any point inside satisfies that the maximum is less than 2 tau max, which is the safe zone. In 3D, this maximum shear stress criterion is represented by the shown shape. It's a hexagon surrounding the line sigma 1 equals sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3, so surrounding the, the, this line sigma 1 equals sigma 2 equals sigma 3. And any point on the surface represents the onset of failure. Any point inside the hexagon means we're in the safe zone. Two important notes. This failure criteria does not differentiate between tension and compression. If I have a material under sigma yield or under negative sigma yield, both would give me the same onset of failure. Another important note is that this material model does not predict failure in the case of hydrostatic stress. If I take a piece of material and put it in a hydrostatic state of stress where sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3, in that case this maximum is always going to be equal to 0 because the maximum difference will always be equal to 0 and therefore I'm never going to predict this material will fail. The next is the von Mises yield criterion. It's also called the J2 flow theory. It states that a material will fail once the von Mises stress reaches a critical value that here I'm going to call sigma max. To calibrate this material model or to find this sigma max, what I do is I take a piece of the material to the lab, I pull on it until it reaches sigma yield, until it fails, the stress state in this case is equal to uh, sigma yield and everything else is zero. The von Mises stress, if I substitute these values in the von Mises stress equation, I get that the sigma von Mises is equal to sigma yield. In that case, the sigma max is equal to sigma yield. So basically for calibration, I take a piece of the lab, I pull on it, find sigma yield, and then from that, I find that sigma max is actually equal to sigma yield. The von Mises yield criterion can be represented graphically as follows when sigma 3 is equal to 0. This is the equation when sigma 3 equal to 0. 
If I set this to equal to sigma max, then I can draw a curve, and this curve represents the onset of failure. If a value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 gives me a point on this curve, that means the material is about to fail. The safe zone is represented by points that satisfy this equation, and so it's represented by the point inside the surface. And notice the dotted line here is actually the Tresca yield uh, surface. And so you can see that whether you're using the von Mises yield criterion or the Tresca or the, the maximum shear yield criterion, they would give you almost the same response. If I consider a general state of stress described by sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, then the yield surface is represented by a cylinder surrounding sigma 1 equals sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3. Any point on the surface means the material is about to fail. Any point inside the surface means that the material is in the safe zone. Two important notes. Again, this yield criterion does not differentiate between tension and compression, and it also does not predict failure under hydrostatic stress. If the stress state is represented by a matrix where sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and no shear stresses, and if I substitute in the von Mises stress equation, I will get 0. And so this uh, yield criterion, similar to the Tresca yield criterion, does not predict failure under hydrostatic stress. The third and last criterion for failure is a simple criterion for brittle materials. It basically states find the principal stresses sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, and make sure that all of them are less than the, uh, the maximum tensile stress that the material can take, and higher than the compressive stress that the material can take. So, for every i, where i is 1, 2, and 3, make sure that the compressive stress is less than sigma i, is less than sigma t, where t is the tensile strength of that brittle material. So basically, just to give you numerical examples, if the sigma c is, for example, negative 50 MPA, sigma t is 20 MPA, make sure that the sigma 1 and sigma 2 and sigma 3 are somewhere between negative 50 and 20. 